All right, everyone, Wet Movie One back here again for another out and about video for you guys today. Right now, I'm in Century City at the Westfield Mall. You may be asking yourselves, why the hell are you going to a mall for, Brendan? There ain't no nerdy things there anymore. Well, there's a very special little event going on, and uh, me and a friend of mine, we're gonna attend this thing. But I'm with my friend right now, Sean. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up, man? Sure. What the hell are we doing at this mall? At noon. We're gonna go meet Buster Rhymes. But it's not Buster Rhymes. What's wrong with you? Yeah, from the Halloween series. But we are about to go meet uh, somebody from the Halloween franchise that's uh, hanging out at Macy's today. Kind of a weird, kind of a strange thing, but who from the Halloween series? I guess you'll have to wait and find out. Buster Rhymes. It's not Buster Rhymes, but oh. Well, this is the location we're going to right now for uh, the little event that they're having right over here. Because uh, Mr. LL Cool J is in the house right here. We're in Macy's right now. And for the LL, LL Cool J uh, event, um, I just got my wristband. But the thing is, to join the line for this event, you have to buy something from this certain jewelry line. And uh, some of the stuff is kind of kind of pricey. There's a couple yeah. of ones that were a couple thousand dollars and all sorts of stuff. But let me show you guys what I got right here. And this is the little piece that I got right here. Why? Because it was a, the least expensive, I guess. I don't know. It was like a hundred bucks with like, you know, uh, oh, you know, never mind. Never mind. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. But Sean, dude, for you guys that are watching, I just brought this on over too. Just in case, like he may or may not sign things i don't know but you know you know from h2o and everything that'd be kind of cool to have carpenter nick castle ll cool j and maybe jamie lee one day who knows who knows it's, it's gonna be kind of a halloween related kind of day and everything but we'll see what get him to sign right here next to uh, say it mr rhymes could, could you sign this right here wrong person dude what's wrong with you well guys ll just got in the building right now people everywhere what? Just uh, met LL Cool J there for a moment or two, which was kind of cool. He even signed something for me, which you guys will see in a second. He's uh, right back there doing his thing. Well, that was cool either way, and uh, I think we're gonna have to wait for the next elevator, man. We're gonna have to wait for the next one, but bro. That was kind of cool to be able to get, you know, him to sign my shit. Uh -huh. I, I didn't know if that was going to happen or anything. I was just kind of going in hopes to see what the fuck. But I know I probably should have said, hey, can I talk to you guys on video and stuff? But Yeah, I'll talk to you. Yeah, it was going to happen. But, like I said, this is kind of a Halloween-related video. And we're going to be heading on to another destination in a little bit that has another Halloween person there. We're in Burbank, California right now. Before we go on, on over to our little event that we're going to, we're going to stop off at Atomic Records, see if they have any new Blu-rays or DVDs. Let's go. All right, guys, we're in here right now, and the first thing I came across in here was uh, Bates Motel Season 3 on Blu-ray. It's only five bucks. That's, That's actually a pretty good deal. Have you seen any of the episodes? I only seen, like, the first two of the first season. Yeah, I finished the whole season. The whole, ser the whole series? Yeah, the whole series, yeah. Did it, and does, it end, does it end pretty well, or is it one of those ones that ends when they don't know, they didn't think it was good? There's a conclusion. There's a conclusion? Yeah, conclusion? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, uh, I, might, I might have to get up on this, because I, I love me some Psycho-related stuff. Well, guys, now I'm in the back wall of DVD of Doom that they have. I'm going to go through here, see if I find anything cool, because I haven't been in here in a little while, and see if there's anything kind of stand-out-ish in here, but a lot of generic stuff. A lot of generic stuff, so I have to like weed through, see if I can find something cool. Yeah, still looking around uh, in here, just came across Poison Ivy, uh, the new seduction. And I think I just found out recently that Shout Factory is going to be putting out a box set of all the Poison Ivy movies on Blu-ray, man. I used to have like Poison Ivy 2 on repeat back in the day, you know, back in my teenage years. I'm not going to tell you why, but if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But, uh... <laughs> There's also this thing right here, which never got a hasn't never got a Blu-ray release yet, but I've always, always really liked this one right here. 187 with Samuel Jackson and uh, I believe Cliff Clifton Collins Jr. is one of like the, the you know, uh, one of the you know gangster thugs that's like after him in this movie kind of thing. If you guys have seen it, man, you know definitely know what you guys think in the comments. But I've always been a bit of a big fan of that one. All right, everyone, we're at our next destination of the day. About to go on over to a signing, uh, for what? Ooh, you brought your masks, man. Yes, sir. You're, you're always rocking these different masks and stuff when we ever go to these conventions and things. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, we have a special person that's going to be here at Dark Dale today, uh, Alan Howarth, yes. the composer of uh, Halloween 2 through, I believe, the uh, Curse of Michael Myers, uh, yeah, if we're not mistaken. We met LL Cool J just a couple seconds ago for you guys in the video, but now, how about some Alan Howarth, baby? We're now in Dark Delicacies, ready for the, the signing over here with Alan Howarth and um, Richard Band is also here. You know, uh, Charles Brand's brother from the Full Moon uh, days and Empire days and stuff like that. We got, you know, uh, Richard Band right there. And we also have Alan Howarth, the guy that did all the, most of the music for the Halloween uh, franchise. But Richard Band, man, that's fucking cool to me. Man, I grew up watching his stuff. Him and his brother, mm -hmm. they were dope, man. They were dope. Should be a really cool uh, little thing. I bring in, brought over my, you know, Halloween box set over here too. So let's add another signature to it. And I had so uh, I feel ten pounds lighter. Sure. What did you just say? What did you say when you came out of there? I felt ten pounds lighter. Oh, you, but, you, but you look thirty pounds lighter. Well, thank you kindly. You're welcome. It's a whole nurture system. I've been trying that for months. <laughs> yeah. But guys, to enter the signing over here, you had to buy this um, soundtrack from Alan Howarth. Which is how cool that is, man. You can like see like the raindrops and everything, and then bam, you get Michael right behind there. Like, how dope is that, dude? Like, this is a, a, a vinyl, but uh, you know, me and my friend over here, we don't have a vinyl player, but that's what you kind of had to get to, you know, come over to this thing. But that's super cool. Kind of creepy, though. Look at that. I don't know. I, li I like it. I dig it. All right, everyone. I'm now with the man himself, Alan Howard. Hey, right gang. Here. The guy who made the music for a lot of the John Carpenter flicks, Halloween 2, up until what? Curse of Michael Myers, right? For Halloween, up to yeah. Curse, and then I still it's went on to do Prince of Darkness and They Live with Carpenter after that. Yeah. What, what is? What was it that got you into wanting to compose mu compose music for movies? Was it like a certain movie that you watched back in the day? Well, I got me into movies. Actually, my wife was uh, UCLA as a film student. And I did the sound and the music for her movie, which was fun. And a buddy of mine saw me doing this, and he was in Paramount, and he worked in the transfer bay. And two guys were having a conversation about you knowing about synthesizers, and he goes, "You're talking to my buddy Al." And it turned out that was Star Trek: The Motion Picture. Oh, that's pretty cool. So my first sound effects job was Star Trek, and then the, the picture editor from Star Trek, Todd Ramsey, uh, he did Escape from New York. So he introduced me to Carpenter, and boom, like Star Trek and Carpenter is my main career point. Was it that made you, how, how, how did you know that, you know what, this music is what I want to do, you know, for a living and make it a... I was always fascinated by, I was, you know, when I was in high school and, and grade school, I was an artist, I was a painter, a sculptor kid, Okay. but music was like the hobby, and then in my junior year, I got invited to play in a guy's band, mm -hmm. Uh, and at the end of the night, he handed me 80 bucks and it was over. Okay. Forget art, I'm doing music. That, that, that's actually cool. One last question. Sure. Out of all the different movies you've watched, you know, uh, throughout your life, what was it? What was it? One score in a movie that was like, that was amazing. I wish I, I wish I was. I wish I was able to do that. Forbidden Planet. Oh, yeah? No question about it. Forbidden Planet because it was totally abstract electronic music, and I was a kid, so I was very impressionable. And it was a great movie. That was a Leslie Nielsen one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember that one too. But thank you so much, Alan. Do you have a website people can find you at? Because you have all these different CDs that people can get from you. AlanHowarth.com Yeah, you guys, make sure you guys check it out. There you go, right there. I got a web store, you can buy stuff. Yeah. Send me messages, we'll talk. Yeah, man. Make sure you guys check them out. Thank you, Alan, you're the man. Bow! We just got out of Dark Delicacies right now. We're off to go get something to eat. But me and him, we're talking. Hopefully this camera doesn't fall. Don't fall, don't fall! Okay, we're good. We're good. We're still good. Don't die. Okay. Don't, hey, fall. Hey. Don't, fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. Okay, look. We're talking about movies. Whoa. Eh. Back. Okay, cool. Stay. No. Back. Okay, cool. Okay, look. We're talking about movies and what what's kind of ones I don't I'm not in. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was talking about movies with him and ones that I can't get into because my father got me, you know, was making me forcing me to watch these certain ones back in the day. So pretty much any movies that are like Ben Hur and uh you know like spartan spartan kind of movies hold on but yeah dude like i was saying we're talking about fucking movies like 300 and ben-hur and spartacus right. and shit like that right. and you love those things like you just bought like troy and 300 just now right and what, what, what were you saying to me i think it's insane how you've never seen or you, you don't appreciate last samurai yeah that too gladiator but movies like that time pieces like I said, my dad showed me when I was young, and that kind of forced me to watch these things like like Roots. 
Right. You know what I mean? Like back when I was in elementary school, I watched that one and I'm like, holy shit, what the fuck? The guy from Reading Rainbow is getting his ass kicked and getting his foot chopped off. I'm like, what the fuck? Right. And I was, you know, it, was, it, was, it freaked me out. And watching movies like Ben Hur always kind of like, I don't know, bored me. For one, because my dad showed, showed, showed them to me back in the day. And two, shit like leprosy was always freaking me out. Like, what the fuck is leprosy? Right. You know what I mean? But, like, for some reason, I could just never get into those old time, pe the old thing. I don't know how to explain it. Right. Historical films. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part. Like, ones that are, like, people are riding horses and shit. Like, right. I can watch some westerns and things. Right. But certain things, like, I don't know. I don't know. But I can watch kung fu movies all day. Yeah. That's why I would... I would imagine you'd at least like Last Samurai because that's like a samurai film. Yeah, I know. Right. I, I told you. I and it, and it, it's like semi historically accurate. Yeah, and we never been bitching back and forth about Last Samurai today. Yeah. But I've only watched it once back on the day when it first came to DVD. But I'm hungry. I can't think straight. Let's go. Well, guys, our next destination is BJ's Restaurant. Let's head on in and get some grub. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, I just got a little uh what's it called the uh, clam chowder bread bowl uh soup thing right here what, what did you get end up getting uh two appetizers mozzarella sticks and uh, boneless chicken wings boneless chicken wings oh shit we're gonna down this and uh see what happens well guys we're going to our next destination right now we're in this little sketchy ass <laughs> elevator but what are we doing now we're at another mall going to another macy's and uh, returning this thing that I had to get to, to meet LL Cool J. 50% off? 50% off <laughs> and 100% back. He's getting out of Macy's yet again. Second one of the day. Uh, processed my return. Got my money back. have Lumiere over here. Oh, shit. I know, from Beauty and the Beast. Like, what is he doing over there? That's I know. If you want to get a picture of him, it'll probably cost you like 10 bucks. Be careful. Well, as you can tell, <laughs> we're at a little block party right here. They have like different people caged off and stuff over here that are, you know, drinking out here in public. And I didn't know this was happening, to be honest. It's kind of a little surprise. Yeah, it's like a market night kind of thing. Pretend. Yeah, a little market where people are like selling stuff. Let's walk this way. There's like little, you know, vendors selling like their merchandise, their hats, their God knows what. If you want to like spin a wheel and, uh, you know, find out if you're going to get your butt tickled tonight. I think this is the one you're going to get, okay? You know what I mean? It's just like, okay. Uh, ooh, first prize. You know what first prize means? What's first prize? Instead of steak knives. Huh? Instead of steak knives. Okay. If that's what you want it to be. Well, we're heading on back upstairs to the car in the elevator again. And we're about to show you guys the stuff we got today. All right, guys, uh, I'm here with my buddy Sean and we're about to show you guys what we got today on our little outing adventure. Mostly autographs and stuff, but not all autographs. You wanna show them what you got first? Yeah, so I got uh, this album cover signed. Yeah. In the rain. Which I'm sure you guys saw that already at Dark Dell, but it's still cool. And right. then I got this uh, Warlock mask signed. Oh, Dick Warlock? Yeah, Dick yeah. Warlock. But he usually sweet. gets his stuff signed like inside the mask. Yeah, inside. So he yeah. signed it. Oh, that's actually, that came out pretty good. Mm. Right there. That's cool, yeah. He also got this one signed right here. Yeah. That, that's actually pretty cool. Like, there was this lady in line with us when we were about to meet the, the people yeah. at Dark Delicacies going, they don't look the same. No, she said they look exactly oh, the same. they look yeah. exactly the same. Sorry. Yeah. The, yeah, they, I know. It, it's, it's, whatever, it's okay. That's okay. But uh, I'm gonna show you guys what. Oh, you have one more thing, don't you? No, that's it. Just that's those it. two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that and you got two Blu rays, uh, 300 and Troy uh, earlier today. All right, I'm back home now, guys. About to show you guys what I picked up. I did show what I picked up, uh, you know, uh, with my friend Sean out, out there in the parking lot. But the wind started blowing into the microphone and some of the audio got kind of weird and everything like that. And plus, I missed one or two, th you know, one thing uh, that I wanted to show you guys that I, I, I got today. But uh, yeah, uh, one thing I bought over at um, uh, Atomic Records, uh, some person was bringing in their, some of their collection that they were selling you know, to them, and as they were coming in, he was just like, is there anything in this box you would like, sir? And I looked right on top, on the, uh, I looked through, the, through his box, but the first thing I saw on top was like, oh, I want to get this, and I'm like, 
you take five bucks and uh, this thing you know this thing was rare super rare at one point but it's just kind of cool to get it for five bucks and the discs are pretty you know in decent really good condition there's no scratches or anything and that is a mystery science theater 3000 volume three uh on dvd kind of has like this cool little like you know folded uh front cover kind of thing looks kind of badass uh in my opinion this is you know volume three of mystery science theater you can't go wrong it's five bucks, you know, come on. I, I probably could have got it for a lot, you know, a couple bucks less, but whatever. Five bucks is five bucks, helping somebody out. And uh, then the other stuff I'm going to show you is all uh, signed stuff. Uh, actually, uh, I got a CD over there from uh, Richard Band, uh, who was at the, the signing today at uh, Dark Dell. And uh, it was the remote soundtrack. Uh, and I heard there may be a Blu-ray of this uh, movie coming out. This one I've, I've always liked since I was a kid. As part of their Moon, Moonbeam line, you know, the same company... Or the same play, the same people that uh, put out uh, Prehysteria and, of course, um, Puppet Master. Well, Puppet Master was from Full Moon, but, you know, same thing, because Richard Band made the music to all the Puppet Master movies also. And uh, he signed my uh, my CD right here. It didn't come out very well, but whatever. Uh, but this movie was or, this movie was something I've always really liked. It's kind of like um, a lower-budget, kind of, sort of, rip-off of uh, Home Alone, uh, in a way where, you know, these kids are at home, and like these goofy, goofy goons come in there and they're like trying to, you know, get them away by like, setting traps kind of sort of thing from what I remember. I haven't seen it in such a long time, but like I remember really, really loving this and I didn't know they, were, I didn't know they made a soundtrack to it. So I grabbed it uh, from Richard Band right there. It was $20, which was cool, whatever. But I'm going to show you one more sign thing first. But, uh, but before I show you that, I did get this new jacket. Uh, you know, uh, from Macy's today, and I also got a new pair of uh, black je you know, black jeans, which I don't normally wear jeans because my lymphedema and stuff uh, that I have in my legs. But these ones seem to be kind of cool, and they're not those you know weird khaki pants that I have all these different pockets in and things. So like when I go out on the town, I can maybe look a tiny bit nicer. I hope I look okay. I don't know, but uh, that's what I also got at Macy's today, along with you know meeting, uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, is LL Cool J uh, today? It was only like a maybe a three minute, two minute little like hey there, how you doing? Kind of kind of a meet and greet thing, but uh, it was you know really nice to meet him for a moment or two. Got that picture with him and I believe his wife uh, that has this you know new jewelry line uh, that's out there right now. I'm not gonna lie, really kind of too expensive for me, you know. So that's why I had to re re return the thing. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't just you know plunk money down like that it's, it's not I, I just really couldn't do that so I had to you know I had to do I had to do what I did but uh I did uh get uh him to sign my uh Halloween uh Blu-ray box set right here so now I have Nick Castle uh LL Cool J right here and now and of course John Carpenter uh down here in gold and uh on the back I got Mr. Alan Howarth which is signed in like a metallic kind of pen looks kind of cool my friend uh, you know, let me use this cool little, his cool new uh, pen right here. This is the guy that did the music uh, for Halloween 2 through Halloween, Halloween Curse of Michael Myers. And everything signed the back of that right there. So this is kind of cool. And, it's, you know, how how often could you run into LL Cool J? You know what I mean? And, like, have him sign something. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of cool. He doesn't do Halloween conventions or horror conventions or anything like that. So that's, that's kind of cool to have him, uh, you know, sign my... Uh, my Halloween, I believe, and I believe this box is out of print, if I'm not mistaken. And he also signed my my Halloween H2O uh, standalone Blu-ray right here. This is from my friend. Uh, I told my friend Sean this is his, uh, but he has to like figure out like a way to maybe find this artwork again and like you know something like that before I can you know give him the actual art in there because I'm not gonna like you know have my set incomplete or anything like that. But if he can figure out something, he can have that H2O that's in my set right there. But uh, yeah, that's all the stuff I got today. Got my ho my Halloween set signed by LL uh, right there. My you know remote soundtrack signed by Richard Band, and along with you know my mystery science theater and some new clothes. But uh, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this little out and about having fun kind of vlog. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys support me in any way. Uh, I also have a donation link in the description box of this video if you guys want to you know donate to my show to help to help fuel the fire, which is. The wet, you know, the wet one right here. I also have some social media links uh, down below if you guys want to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that stuff. Send me some messages. I'll do my best to, re you know, respond to you guys. I really do appreciate you guys watching and supporting. And I'll see you guys all on the next adventure.